Hello guys, Wizix here. Thanks for your interest into my Envit scattering script for Maya. Uh, in this video, I will give you a really quick overview of the feature of Envit. Okay, so pretty simple. Once it's installed, I just have to click into the shelf and Envit will launch. We can open the setting. As you may already know, Envit is based on a lot of modules and tools on Maya, Bifrost, LookDevX, MaterialX, Maya USD, a lot of things. So I did a module checker you can open, and this way you can see uh, all the modules need our load and the right version. Okay, and you can download if it's not the case. To start by the setting, the most important one is the Unify scaling. Okay, so you choose that and all the Algorithm in Envit will depend on that. Let's go to the scatter. When you start, you, can, you can't click anywhere. You can't do anything because you need a ground. A ground is something really simple. It's your main terrain on which we will scatter. Then Envit will create an entire system to work on this ground. It's our first level. So just for the demo, we can do something pretty simple, which is just a plane. I will first transform the latest story. You see, it's like a snow, okay? As much as the surface is plain, it will resave scatter, okay? And you can change that, of course, simply to have more or less the effect. So one first modifier, mask by elevation. So, okay, from the top to the beginning, you can reverse, you can do a lot of things, pretty simple effect here. Okay. And fractal noise, another one. Okay. So now uh, let's discuss about the input map. Now Envit 2.0 support real texture map, which are not the case uh, for previous uh, user. Uh, you know, the previous version don't support that. So I will input a map. So of course that will remove everything. And now I will load a map. Uh, I don't know. Let's go to a simple texture, for example, this one. Okay, I flattened my my ground to be more load visible. Okay, so the gradient and the painting on the texture here that's working. Input mask. Okay, and the new method is now the paint mask. Same thing when you uh, check the modifier to be active, it will be empty. Then you can choose to paint. That will uh, open you the paint mask and create the mask for you. So everything is black by default and you just have then to, okay, to paint. So it's not, it's not vertex painting anymore. It's real texture. Okay. So you have a lot of preci precision. Uh, you can modify the radius with the default, uh, you know, B key on Maya like uh, on any tool for Maya. Okay, and you can paint like that, change the color if you want. Okay, great. Uh, nothing happened, you have to hit save texture. Okay. You can fill everything if you want to do the reverse effect. Okay, I fill everything, I select the black and I can paint right here yeah, what I want to subtract. Okay, close the window. And now it's okay. Okay, so you import map from any world creator, Gaia or any script with a texture, you can paint by hand, okay. And everything is, um, you can add all of them, okay, you can combine all of them. So I, I can do the, the base node now, <laughs> elevation, but you, you got the, the tricks, okay. Uh, there is then transform we will see with the asset and I will continue with the uh, surface which is really a powerful way also to do subtract and add uh, population. Okay, let's select a simple sphere. Let's say here. Okay, and I want to just subtract with this sphere. You will come here, hit the subtract icon, you wait some second and Envit will create for you. Okay, it's dynamically, of course, you can place it. 
you can you have some mode you can invert mode okay with some effect you can scale up okay some option i will keep seeing uh, simple here um, and demonstration if you want to add a surface just click on the add one here that will add to the list and now this one also have scatter effect on it and you can select uh, hide the geometry you have some options you can remove you can if you click on the name that will select you the controller to move if the piece sphere i want now i click on this icon here that will switch it to a positive one okay so with the lister and all of this you can already create complex positive and negative uh, scattering area Okay, so now what we want is to attach item to the scatter point. So I'll create a new clean scene with a grown lighting environment and the same system than before. Okay, now in my asset, which is empty, I have three options okay, to create asset. Here we will only see one. This one is if you want to load your own custom asset to convert from a scene. And this one, the new one, will open the Envit library, which is a new browser with all your assets can be organized store and also of course create. I will do a dedicated video for that then. Okay, and you just have to one click to your asset to load it. So let's choose for example a three. Uh, this one seems to be great. You have information, name, size, everything, the page renderer. This icon uh, indicates that it's an animated three. I can zoom look okay great three i want this one so i just have to click on it to load uh, just before to load what i can do is just to lower the amount of display only in the in the viewport for now and i will click on the icon okay and you will have that in order that the viewport keep to be responsive now in the asset i have my three which is list here i can click the icon to show hide and you can click into the name that will open you the asset attribute with all the attributes relative to this item okay color everything scale offset okay and template display you can switch the template display the color here you have the proxy mode which is more uh, the lod of your this um, asset if it if it has been uh, created uh, i will show you how to do it when you create your asset okay uh, always the same for the viewport and here it's the full, full mode of course on a big tree like that uh, be careful when you click on this button i will try to do it here by um lower the yes the number of three only some tree like that and go to full mode okay and now you have your three in full mode here with all the little leaves perfect and those one are animated so i can hit play and i will have my wind effect on the viewport pretty heavy but that works. That's the idea. Okay, great. So go back to my proxy here with my radius, which is okay. Uh, now, what I want, I want to control the scale of this tree. Let's say maybe only this way. Okay. Nice, great. Um, the important thing we want to deal with when you have a scatter is, of course, randomization. Here, the problem is all is on the same rotation, same scale. Okay. So you go to the transform and pretty simple. We don't need translation, but I will hit just rotation and automatically with a preset, it will do random rotation on my asset same thing for scale and some scale randomization maybe it's a bit too much 
I will change the value. Okay, pretty simple. Now let's tweak a bit. Blue noise, okay. Be careful here to be at because here I'm not at the one hundred percent. Yes, there is a lot of three. Okay, great. So just before to do a render, I want. I can select my terrain system and hide if I want. Uh, I am a kind of a river here on my mesh. Okay, so what I did, I create some curves. So in order to have control, I will select my curves and create a um, sweet mesh. Okay, I will create a sweet mesh. Then here in surface, I select this and I will use this mesh, polygon mesh as subtraction. Okay, then when I clean the mesh, I can show hide here. Now, if I select the scale profile, I can control here my river patch. To finish, what will be interesting now is to create a biome with other kind of tree. So pretty simple. In this layer, I will add other three that will use the same scattering setting, the same mask. Everything here will be applied to my other guys. Uh, let's say, for example, this uh, this one. Okay, to add a pine. Okay, uh, I will keep it like that so I can control if I want to control uh, the scale of this one. Okay, same thing. I will add another one. Uh, there is a dead one, or oh, this one could be great too, a bit higher. Now I can also choose color because everything is green by default. I can open and say, okay, I would like this one to be in blue. Nice. And I don't want as much as this one. I want here, I have a probability slider. I just want, yes, this. Right. And this one to be pretty big compared to other. And pretty easily, in the viewport, you can start to deal with uh, this. Then comes the time for rendering. Okay, so let's open Arnold. I wait a bit and that will start to render. Of course, as you know, when you render tree or thing like that, it's a bit heavy and a bit long to render. Um, one trick is to be careful about this setting, the right depth, okay? The be sure that you need diffuse, right depth diffuse, okay? Uh, if you just set it to one, that can double or even more your render time, okay? So be careful, do you need um, illumination global, okay? In, in a forest like that, it's not really necessary because everything is uh, about uh, direct sunlight, okay, and this is really time consuming. And of course, be careful about your setting. And it's pretty old. I have my forest here. Okay, the last thing to know is about material. Uh, if you want to edit your material, of course, as you know, it's based on material X, which means you have to use look dev X, new graph editor. Uh, for now, it's a bit tricky, but I will improve it in future version uh, once uh, Autodesk gives us a better uh, Python dev kit library. Uh, but for now, let's say I want to modify a bit the blue one, the, this one. You can access by clicking this icon in the Envid system. 
you will have your USD which is loaded here. Okay, I have my three USD. You deploy and you have Jiro and MTL for material, and here you will find your material. Uh, so my leave, right click, show in log dev X. So my leave shader for this one, I double click and I'm inside my shader. I can say, okay, I want this one to be less saturated a bit. Yes, so maybe too much, but. And rocks on this guy. Yes, this way. Let's say I want again. Okay. So, yes, really powerful. I will then create template like that for you to, uh, to play with. So I really hope you like this quick overview about Envit and feel free to join the Discord if you want to know more about it.